We've talked a lot about how to set up OBS and get ready for streaming, but we haven't actually covered how we can set data from us to the actual streaming provider. We shall do that now. But for that, I need to explain a few concepts and just in broad strokes tell you what streaming is all about. So anything that's captured here is in fact that area right here. And anything that's happening in there and anything that's happening on the audio mixer here ideally will be recorded or sent to the streaming provider. And this happens by taking the video feed and the audio feed and muxing it together, multiplexing it together, then chopping it up into little bits and sending it over the internet so that it arrives at the streaming provider. Now, this means that it doesn't necessarily arrive in the correct order. So the streaming provider goes and takes or puts all these things together or they just divert the stream to the viewer at which, at, at your end, at the viewer's end, anything will be ordered and then they watch your stream. So the size of the packets doesn't actually change, but the amount of packets that you send, that will change. And the more packets you send, technically, the better your picture quality is. And you generate more packets by either sending larger pictures, capturing larger pictures, or higher frame rates. To put it into tangible terms, we need to have a look at three settings in OBS to understand how such packets are generated and how many of those you can send over to the streaming provider. Let's take a look. Under settings, the three tabs in question are stream. This lets you select who you're actually streaming to, in addition to recording to your local hard drive, if and when you want to do that. Under output, we're gonna have a look at how these packets are actually generated, either via hardware or via software, and at what bit rate. And under video, and this is the tab we're gonna start at, we're gonna have a look at how large your pictures are that you're sending out. This might look familiar if you know Photoshop a little bit. We have two resolutions here, and that might be confusing to newcomers. We have the base or canvas resolution, and we have the output or scaled resolution. And we also have the frame rate down here. And then we have the downscale filter that is applied of how we actually arrive at this result. Let me try and explain this. I might not be very good at this, but let me try, let me try. The base resolution is the area that you're capturing. So in my case, it's the home monitor. I have a no frills 1920 by 1080 monitor, and that's the area we're capturing. So my desktop size is set to this. If you go to the drop down, you get other resolutions. If you have a 4K monitor, for example, you get something much larger and it makes more sense for 4K users because you might not want to send a 4K stream down the internet because your connection might not be fast enough to make that happen. And that's when downscaling really makes sense. In my case, it doesn't, but OBS has applied this by default anyway, I guess to be conservative about the bitrate. The scaled resolution is what happens to this whole picture at the output before it's being streamed over or recorded. So in my case, I'm retaining the aspect ratio, but I'm making the picture smaller. I'm turning it into 1280 by 720. Again, in the drop-down menu, I have many other choices of how that could happen to as low as 640 by 360. But if I don't want to do this at all, if I want to retain the size of my desktop, I'm going to have to set this to 1920 by 1080. So now my base resolution and my scaled resolution is the same, so there's no scaling that happens. You might be inclined to do it the other way around, that you say, oh, I don't really need to capture 1920 by 1080, I can capture something smaller. But watch what happens when I do that. If I look at this picture for now, and now I set my base resolution to 1280 by 720, and of course then the scaled resolution to the same, and I apply this, watch what happens to my scene. I see a lot of gray stripes here, and that means that my scene that I had set up is now too large to actually fit on this area that I'm capturing. And that is, of course, because now I'm capturing a smaller area. This does save some software resources, but it makes it really awkward because then I have to go and literally scale down each of my sources, or use the shortcut to do that there. So that will work, and now a smaller area will be captured, but it's not exactly what I wanted to do. As a rule of thumb, I would leave the base canvas resolution at the same size as your monitor is, and then if you must, downscale the output. 
The reason why you might want to do what OBS is suggesting we do is that your internet connection might not be fast enough to cope with the amount of data necessary to get an acceptable image resolution at 1920 by 1080. So if I set this to that, this will use up a larger data rate for acceptable image quality than that. The lower I go, the less of a bit rate I need to retain an acceptable image resolution. The same goes for the frame rate. Currently and the default is set to 30 frames a second. And that's the amount of pictures we're sending over or that we're capturing over the internet. The default is 30 and for regular not too paced content that's just absolutely fine. But for high paced action video games 60 might be much more acceptable. Video games are commonly played at, a, at even higher frame rates, like 120 or even 240 frames a second. But we can't really capture that because the amount of bitrate we need to make that happen, well, it's just not happening in 2020. I use 60 for video games and 30 usually for my 3D streams. But I also use the output 1920 by 1080. Now, the higher you set this, the more of a bitrate you need. And we're going to set that under output. Let me go and apply these values here quickly, head over to output and explain some of these options here. First of all, we can set this output mode to simple or advanced. Now this will reset the values that were there before. If I go back to simple, all the values that I've set here will be thrown out of the window. Just be aware of that. If you select this, you've set everything up, you set this to advanced, these values will look different but we get a ton of more options here. I'm gonna go and leave this on simple for now, just so that we don't overcomplicate things. In the streaming tab, we can set the video bitrate that I was talking about. The default isn't bad. It's not great either, but it's something that most internet connections can handle, 2,500 kilobits per second. We also have the encoder, which tells us which piece of hardware on our computer is actually making the encoding happen. There's either software, x264, or there's hardware, which is commonly a GPU in your system. If you have an NVIDIA RTX GPU, then I strongly recommend you use that because there is on the RTX cards, there is a specific streaming video encoder in hardware on the cards that's usually very capable no matter how hard the rest of the GPU works. However, if you're playing a GPU intense game or you're having a GPU intense application running, then sometimes the frame rate of your stream might be compromised. And in that case, you can always set this back to software. It entirely depends on your circumstances and I encourage you to play around with this a little bit. An audio bit rate of 160 kilobits a second is just fine. I wouldn't mess with that. At the bottom here, we can set how our videos are recorded. So this doesn't have an influence on that, but this has an influence on that. Because under recording path, we can set where our videos are stored. Under recording quality, we can say same as stream. And that means that with literally no extra overhead, our streams can be saved locally to the hard drive with the same bitrate and the same encoder that we're setting up up here. However, you can also use a different recording quality compared to your stream. So you could stream at a low quality, but record at a much higher quality down here with these presets. You also have the recording format here, and that's just the container in which your data will be saved. Flash, MP4, MOV, and so forth. But back to the most important question, how high should your video bitrate be? Well, several streaming providers make the following suggestions. YouTube, for example, suggests that for 480p stream in 854 by 480, you should use something along the lines of 500 to 2000 kilobits a second. 720p at 30 frames a second, they recommend 1500 to 4000 kilobits per second. 60 frames a second at the same resolution, they suggest you go a little bit higher, up to 6000 kilobits per second. 1080p at 30 frames a second, they recommend 3000 to 6000 kilobits a second. 1080p 60, they recommend 4,500 to 9,000 kilobits a second. I'm going to put a link in the description to these suggestions as well as the ones that Mixer and Twitch suggest, but you can see that there really is no limit. If you have it, 
put it out there. The higher you make this, the better your stream is going to look. However, there is a downside to really high frame rates. Some services like Twitch, they often don't transcode the signal. So unless your viewers can receive what you're sending out, they won't be able to watch your stream unless there's some transcoding options enabled. I don't want to overload you or scare you with all this detail, but if you stay between 2,500 and 6,000, you'll be fine. But how can you find out how high you can actually go in regards to your data rate or your bit rate? Well, that's where a little online tool called Speed Test comes in handy. It provides you essentially with a single button, and when you click that, you will test your upload and your download speed. It'll also tell you the ping. This is how fast a packet from your computer is sent to a server that's being shown down here and how fast it comes back. A lower ping means your internet connection is better than if you have a higher ping. The download speed isn't as important as the upload speed for your streams, but take this with a pinch of salt. So even though mine says about 20, it really varies throughout the day and I'll show you another little trick in an upcoming episode of how to check directly before your broadcast how well your internet connection is doing at that moment. So if we look at the results, this is the maximum possible upload speed I could squeeze over my internet connection. Let's say it's 20 megabits per second. So this is the equivalent of 20,000 kilobits a second. Realistically, you don't want to use all of it. To err on the side of caution, I would recommend you use about 50 to 75% maximum of that because you also need to account for other things going over that data line while you're sending out your actual signal there, i.e. your stream. There is another way of getting a slightly better result. For that, you need to go back to the home page and switch this from multi to single. That's just a single click here until single lights up and then this circle turns orange. And what speed test then does is it doesn't use multiple lines to achieve the highest amount of download and upload speed. It uses a single line to do that. And especially on the upload speed, it is more accurate in my experience than using the multiple lines. So I've had with a multiple default setting, I've been shown values that were not real when it comes to streaming. So you can see that my upload speed is going down a little bit. It's still pretty close to 20, but on other days, it's more like close to one to two. It really depends on the condition. So take that value, halve it, and think of that as your maximum upload bit rate. Then head back to the OBS settings under output and put that in here. So just for a laugh, I'm gonna go and set mine to 5,000. Hit apply and that will get you streaming. I know it was a lot to take in, but I had to explain it in this way so that you understand the ins and outs and how I arrive at values that I'm kind of throwing into the air here. In the next episode, I'm going to have a look at how you can actually connect to your streaming provider. We'll conduct a test stream with a few testing options. Stay tuned for that.